So I may have given the impression in the past that uh, when, you, to, when you're taking care of your boots, when you're cleaning your boots, that you need to go through the whole rigmarole, the process of saddle soap and detergents and all that. That's just not the case. That's something you can do if you ever get uh, chemicals or, or some, something on it that, that is just difficult to remove, something that's not going to be removed with a, with a brush. And it's a labor-intensive process. It's not very fun because you get your boots all wet and then you want to treat them and you want to get it done because you may need them the next day and they have to dry. And, and so that, that's not the case. That's kind of an extreme measure. For the rest of the time, uh, on your just your daily and weekly and monthly maintenance for your boots, all you need is a good brush. Uh, the brush that I have found to be the very best, uh, well, it's just about perfect for all types of handhold or household projects, is the Carlisle 4024. It's a super stiff bristle brush. It's got, um, you can hold it really well. And the nice thing is it protects your hands and you never slip off. Um, these are wonderful brushes. I'll put these in my Amazon store at Wrangler, wranglermart.com. They're about 10 bucks or so. But this is good for cleaning wheels, all types of things, but it's perfect for really doing your, your boots. So let me show you something right here. So here's a before and after. Right here is, um, these have just been brushed. This is the right boot here. It looked just like the left boot. And you can see how well, how well that works. Really is a great method. And there's lots of, it's really good for your leather also to hit it with the brush. And so the cup, one other thing I'm gonna add here is a sanding block. We'll get into that in a minute. So. I'll just kind of talk as I'm doing it here. Uh, as you guys, you guys know that I like the Obanoffs product, the, the Obanoffs, the, the paste wax, uh, and, I st and I stand by that. I really like that stuff. However, unless you're, you know, as it says, that's heavy duty stuff. It's for extreme duty, extreme use. And it's not always suitable for guys that are not out, you know, in wildland fire or not constantly getting wet and dry. And it has, it has some downsides, actually, that I've come to, to not really appreciate um, over the last two years of using it. And the, and the downside, the only downside is, is the buildup. What happens is, uh, I, mean, I like to put the open offs on, you know, I like to take care of my boots and make sure that they're coated. And sometimes I have a tendency to put it on too often when it doesn't need it. And it builds up and it builds up and it basically it clogs the pores of the leather. Ouch. Sliver, skiver, sliver. Clogs, here you can see right there, it's building up in there, clogs the pores of the leather, like right in there where I can scrape it off on my fingernail. And then you have a leather that's not really able to breathe very well, and you can get carried away with that stuff. So what's the alternative? Do I still use it? Yes, if I was working, I used to work in excavating and running equipment, and we're in the mud and all the time needed something like that to really waterproof and protect my boots and it was fine for that because you used them so hard that it wore it off but if you have a good pair of boots and you're not necessarily in the mud all the time or you live in a drier climate it's not really i don't think it's the best product i think something more of a cream is better so Right there, you can see, if you look closely, it's right there is, is it starting to build up a little bit. And that's what I like about the, the Carlisle brush is it's so stiff that it, it kind of just gets, gets rid of it, kind of knocks it off. And it really helps to open up the pores of the leather. I'm going to show you a demonstration. So these boots here have a, the rough side out. It's something that Nick's just started doing. You can see you've got the smooth outside which is typically what you have on your boots and then there's the rough side you know the split the split leather this is much more abrasive resistance and re resistant and and they started uh, giving you the option of having the rough out and it wears like iron it wears it's so so much tougher you can't really cut it it's almost kind of self-healing it's it's much much better but i don't like that build up you can see right there right there still a little bit of build up on there and then it, it just clogs up so we're going to use a cream that i am really starting to kind of go to that i like better than the than the hd i think boy that looks good doesn't it really opens up the pores it doesn't take very long either you can get up there and get those eyes get those all brushed off it puts a nice shine and luster on it 
I don't like cleaning boots with soap and water um, for the reason is it just removes all the natural oils. Everything is so, so many things that we have now are synthetic that we don't realize or we don't often think about it because um, we don't have a lot of stuff that is leather. It, it's leather's skin and it needs to be nourished and it needs to have the nutrients put back in it, which is the oils and the fats, or it becomes dry, cracked, and brittle. Be sure you get, get down in the cracks, especially there in the welt. All that stitching. The nice thing when you do this for many years, the brush, because it's so coarse and so stiff, it just puts a, a really beautiful texture and luster on the leather that you just can't get by any other way. That looks pretty good right there, doesn't it? That looks nice. That really cleans it up good. That's just a brush. That's no, not using any detergents or anything. You know, deter, as, we, as I was talking about earlier, detergents are so hard on not only leather, but on us too. I mean, the idea that we need to wash our hair with this uh, really um, strong shampoos that just strip all the natural oils from it, and then our hair becomes so dry that we need to reintroduce some sort of oils using a conditioner or something. I mean, that's just wrong-headed. It's, it's, um, I think it's been propagated by the people who sell shampoo and conditioner. You're better off just to vigorously wash it, you know, using your hands with water and don't strip all those natural oils out of it. Your hair will be healthier and it's a better way to go. It's a lot, whole lot cheaper too. Um, same goes for the leather. You know, don't, don't get that soap and water on there unless you absolutely have to. You get something, like I said, something that's really caustic on there. So a sanding block, a 220 sanding block, you can get these paint stores, Home Depot, is a really good way to, sometimes you'll get, uh, I've got glue and I've got some paint, different things on there. You can just take a minute there and, and sand that stack, that leather stack. See, this, this leather on these is actually a true leather stack. You can see right there that it's all different, several different layers right there. You know, that's always on cheaper shoes that they look like they are, but it's actually a plastic sticker that's on there that makes it look like a leather stack. These, the NYX good boots are going to have a real leather stack. And the, the reason for sanding like this here is that it really helps to open up those pores. And it's hard to condition that leather. It'll really dry out. If you don't take, take special attention to it, it'll start to separate and just gets dry as a bone and starts to shrink. Now this here is pretty easy to moisturize because it's so thin, but you gotta think that that leather goes all the way through there and it's pretty thick. And so the only way you can introduce moisture into it is, um, is through the ends. And so by taking your sandpaper there, and kind of getting rid of cleaning, cleaning off all of the junk and deposits and things that block those pores in that leather are going to really help it to absorb. And it's just noticeable to absorb the, the oil, the natural oil or cream or whatever it is you choose to put, it, put on here. And I just go ahead, same way all the way around here, I just take the sandpaper and, and just work that whole edge. Boots really like this. It opens up those pores, cleans things up. You can, they do get a little bit beat up, kind of scuffed up there. This, this sorts out a lot of that stuff and just kind of gives it a reboot. A reboot on the boot there. There. We're almost done here. So we don't want to leave all that leather dust and such on there. So we'll take our Carlisle brush and... Clean that off there one more time because we don't want to trap all those contaminants and see I've got still got a little paint right there or spray foam or something I'll sand that off of there okay that looks better love these NYX boots best I ever had best I ever had I won't buy another boot as long as they keep making them, they keep making them like they do. They have a fan for life. Oh yeah, that looks good.
don't forget get get down in there you got a lot of stuff trapped in that corner there brush all that out looks nice huh well, almost ready for church here well, the fawn grew up I'm surprised that I think a lot of a lot of the uh, guys aren't taught to sh polish and shine shoes and boots. I'm not surprised. I mean, the things are just not made the way that. I mean, I kind of came from that generation. My, we'd go to church on Sunday, and that was one of the morning rituals. Get up and polish our boots. Have your shoes looking good for church. I grew, learned to do that from an early age. My, my dad always had a, a full shoe shine kit. We wore cowboy boots a lot. We'd polish those cowboy boots up. But uh, oh, yep, with the synthetics, the way shoes, a lot of mini shoes are made now, it's kind of an old thing of the past. But there's no shoe like the handmade shoes. Just can't compare. Look, look how nice that that's opened up that leather there. Isn't that good? So on treatments, um, as I said earlier, I've been going to this is uh, this is some stuff. This is my favorite. Uh, that Adam made for me from Adam's Boots, and if you contact him, I think you can get it from him. He makes it. Uh, it's his secret recipe. I can't tell you what it is. I don't know, but it smells like pina coladas. It's really nice. He puts it in a shampoo bottle, which is perfect. You can squeeze out as much as you want. But I'm really, um, I'm really kind of preferring these creams over the HD because it's so uh, less. There's so much less buildup on it. And it, uh, the leather seems to really like it. It absorbs really nice. It doesn't leave, um, it doesn't leave that real sticky, waxy type of coating on it that seems to attract a lot of dirt. Um, I like it. Open Office is, is, is actually they 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 have a product that's similar to this. It's their, it's the same stuff as their HD, but it's in liquid form. And I have a gallon of that as well. And, and I like it just as well as I like this stuff from Adams. Uh, I would. I would recommend for most users, and my, in myself included, I'm even preferring it, the liquid over the, the heavy duty wax paste. Because it's, it's just easier to work with. And it just, again, that, that buildup kind of really, really bothers me. I'm gonna pay, pay special attention to the, to the stacked area and especially down in there. And this really helps to, I'm not gonna say waterproof your boots, but certainly make them water resistant. And this, again, that stack is my biggest concern. I'll, I'll put several layers of that on there nice and thick and let that absorb in there while I'm working on the boots. But by working, the, working this down in, into these welts here, and especially at the joints, wherever the stitching comes together, they're going to, um, it's gonna make it a lot more water resistant. Anyone who tries to sell you and tells you that they've got a, a waterproof leather boot is uh, they're not telling you the truth you can't waterproof a leather boot now Danner I mean they have that Gore-Tex booty that they put inside and they claim their boots waterproof and I've worn those the Fort Lewis and I've wore their boot I wore their boots a long time before I got got into better boots and what happens with those things is the the leather the boots not waterproof it's just a Gore-Tex booty in there and and so you the leather gets wet and the water soaks all into the boot and you're squishing around in there and the, with a like a waterproof sock on it's just terrible I mean so it's, it's a I think it's a total gimmick and not only that but the the uh, that Gore-Tex booty comes loose and after you wear the boots a little while then you're squishing around in there and it's like you know like a kid wearing his dad's galoshes it's just terrible I, I i think that that's a an awful i don't know if they do it anymore i, I see they still have gore-tex tags on there but it, that's got no that's got no business being in a work boot like that yeah you know i'm hard on danner and it, it's not that i don't like the company i mean they're a local company and they used to make really great boots but they they market themselves as, as just being the best there is, the be all end all. And they're, they've got a fire boot that's just been fraught with all sorts of problems. And it, it's not, it's, it's only a little bit less money than, than a Nix or a White's or an Adams. And it's not, uh, I don't think it's up to snuff. And, and, and guys are buying them all the time thinking that they're getting their money's worth because they just don't know. Um, but I have, I've not been impressed with them at all. And a lot of their boots, I think I heard they're still they're making some in the states, but a lot of them are 
be made overseas too. All right, so once you get that on there, good coating. Look how that soaked in there, isn't that nice? It's all nice and dark, it really, that, that stacked heel really likes that. You don't have to worry, spend time worrying about it because when you do it, get a resole, you know, when you rebuild, that's all gonna get replaced, so it's gonna last you quite a while. But if you just take care of it like that, it'll be good. So take your, your brush one last time and get that. You don't wanna leave that white stuff in there. You want to get that out, and it, by hitting it with a brush, it kind of kind of takes care of it. Love these brushes; they're good for cleaning wheels too. I think maybe I mentioned that. We're almost done. A couple things to do, but this is just something you can do in the evening while you're sitting in your chair. Doesn't take very long, do it once a week or so. Your boots will love it, they'll look nice. Be a man of style on the job site. I love these boots so much that I, I wear them out now. I know Alan, my buddy Alan, he's been, every time I see him, he's in his nicks too, but I'm, I'm gonna get another pair I'm gonna keep for good. Okay, one last thing we wanna do. So the false tongue, a lot of guys ask, what's the reason for the false tongue? Some people say they don't like the look of it. I think it looks good with the way they cut them on there. What it does is it protects that gusset. Now, you know, these boots, we may have these boots, how long? 25, 30 years if they're taken care of. The thing that they're not gonna replace is the whole upper, this here. All of this here is gonna, is, is gonna have to last you, you know, as long as you have the boot. What they will replace is the lower. So part of that upper is the tongue. And so that gets a lot of wear. And the reason why the tongues are made the way that they are is that they, they fold. So you have one, two, three, you've got three layers of leather between the, the laces and your instep. And that, that's pretty painful if you wear your, lace up your boots tight, John Henry style like I do, um, that can really be painful on your instep. So uh, having that false tongue gives you a nice thick extra layer of protection. It's just a sacrificial piece. So as those laces wear on there, they wear this thing. And then if that wears through or uh, gets a hole in it, you pitch it out, throw another one in there, and you always have a nice, uh, a nice um, tongue there that won't, won't be damaged. So speaking of which here, so our, these guys here, they get kind of get, if you don't, uh, these are kind of a canary in the coal mine for me to tell you when your boot needs a little bit of TLC right there. Do you see how it's starting to dry and curl up a little bit? that uh, starting to tell you, you need to kind of look after them. So I'll just take my, my Carlisle brush there. Uh, kind of works better on a hard surface there. Brush that down. See right there, I use Obanoff's HD. There's a example right there. See where it's kind of building up, where it didn't soak into the leather. Now, if you just keep adding to that, keep adding to it, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And so, I'll brush this off vigorously. Hit this too. Both sides. Look at all that. Yeah, lots of lots of junk in there. And brush does a good job of cleaning leather. It seems to really like it. Leather seems to like it too. Look how that's kind of Put that down a little bit. Let's put a little bit of leather cream on there. Right there. Rub that in there, nice. Both sides. And when you put your leather cream on, don't forget, neglect to put, put it on the inside sometimes. It seems kind of counter counterintuitive. You don't want your sock to be all greasy, but it's good for you. It's antibacterial, it's antifungal. One thing you may notice if you were, have worn, I, I don't have a real problem with stinky feet. Uh, some people do, uh, but if I wear any type of synthetic shoe, like a hiking shoe or anything, my feet, or, or a sock, my feet smell terrible. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't, I wonder if, if some of these materials that they're using in, in, in some of these high-tech clothing, I wonder if it's good for you. I, I just don't, I'm not convinced of it. It's very functional and it's very water repellent, very breathable, but... What, what is it that causes a guy's feet to smell so bad? Um, kind of should tell, tell us something where natural leather, wool socks, leather boots, they breathe wonderfully. It's real skin. It's, it really resembles to what we have 
but our skin. So it only makes sense. I think there's something to that. Last thing you want to do is your laces. Leather laces are my favorite. I think that they're, they're I much prefer them over synthetic. So I'll take this and fold these, fold it in, in kind of four. I'll just put a little bit of whatever it is you're using there in your palm and take those laces and just kind of pull it through it like buttering corn there. Buttering corn, so put that, pull that through there. Don't forget to treat those laces. It's incredible how much longer your laces will last if you just go through this little process here. It doesn't take very much, just a little bit, but work those in there. The warmth of your hands is gonna really help that, that fat and that oil to get back in that leather. It just makes it nice. It also pulls, they're a lot easier to tighten and they slide. It almost, it, it lubricates them through the speed lacing. You'll really feel the difference if once you oil these, when you're pulling your boots tight and how they slide, it's like a, a lubricated bearing surface right there through that German speed lacing. And it's easier to, the boots are more comfortable. It's noticeable because um, they move, they move. When you bend over, everything moves a little bit. It just gives you a little bit of extra comfort. So that's it. So we'll just put them, put them back in. So when you're doing your laces, just go through here and then uh, down and up through the false tongue. Right there. And match the ends. Follow that down and pull them through. And they go under. I go under. Everybody has their own idea. The toilet paper roll over the top or under. I don't know. It makes a difference. I just do it this way. Like this here. And we're all done. Right there. 15 minutes. 15 minutes and you have your your boots all sorted. Those look pretty nice, don't they? Ready for Texas. I'm going to wear these down to Texas. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next, see you on the, on the next video.